Good evening. A former youth football coach and top flight assistant referee has been accused of a series of child sex offences in Scotland. Pete Haynes has waived his anonymity to tell a BBC Scotland investigation that Hugh Stevenson sexually abused him for years from the late 1970s. It comes as police forces across the UK say hundreds of victims from within football have come forward to report other alleged perpetrators. Well, Mark Daly is our investigations correspondent and his report contains descriptions some viewers may find distressing. May 1979, Scottish Cup final day. It was 12-year-old football fanatic Pete Haynes' first big game in the company of a man he trusted. But Pete says... This was the beginning of a nightmare that would rob him of his childhood. Now aged 50, Pete has decided to waive his anonymity and speak publicly about the abuse he says he suffered at the hands of a football coach and top flight assistant referee. His name is Hugh Stevenson, pictured at Wembley two years earlier. He came up to the house. He was adorned in his SFA blazer with a badge on. It looked very official, very... Um, reassuring, I would imagine, for, for my mum and dad. Um, and asked them politely if he could take me to the match. I still have that programme because that day was the day that my life changed. I was confused. I was 12, coming up for 13. That was a, a, the start of three, possibly four years of intense abuse at the, at the hands of Hugh Stevenson. He'd done things to me that I find difficult to talk about in great detail, but it was about every depraved sexual act that you can think of, um, up to and including rape, yeah. I was raped dozens of times. What kind of effect did this have on you? You were you were just a child. I was ashamed. I felt dirty. My schooling went downhill rapidly. I got into trouble with the police. I ran away from home. Um, I would cut myself. You didn't feel able to, to tell anyone what was happening to you? I tried to hide it. Nearly every time I seen him, he had another child in his car or there was a child going in or out of his house. What does that lead you to fear? That he could do whatever he wanted, to whoever he wanted and whenever he wanted. Over comes across, Ferguson's there, it's a ball. Stevenson was an SFA match official between 1964 and 1983. The referee going over to look at the linesman. Let's have a picture of the linesman to our right. Now, this conversation should certainly be interesting. Stevenson also held coaching roles in the late 70s and 80s with the Glasgow-based Easter Craigs Boys Club and Fergusley United, who often played on these pitches in Paisley. Just one of the many places Pete says he was preyed on by Stevenson. With his football and refereeing credentials, Hugh Stevenson had contact with hundreds, if not thousands of boys over three decades. Pete Haynes says he doubts whether he was his only victim. It would be 10 long years before Pete finally felt able to tell someone what had happened. Um, I contacted um, the police in Paisley, K Division. They went off. I'm fairly sure in a very short space of time, Hugh Stevenson was arrested and charged. What happened to the charges against Stevenson? I have no idea. He was never taken to court? No. And you never heard from the police? No. Police Scotland has confirmed Stevenson was subject to two investigations in the 90s, with reports being sent to the Crown Office. Back then, Pete turned to the Scottish Football Association, where he was invited to meet the late Jim Farry, the then chief executive. They did tell me that Hugh Stevenson was known to them, um, but he was no longer uh, an SFA affiliate. They said they were very sorry for what had happened to me, and in way of 
some sort of apology. Um, they gave me a tour of the, the building in Park Gardens. And your compensation was a tour of the building? Yeah. And that was it. That was the last I heard from them. Pete's mother learned of her son's story around the same time as his visit to the SFA. I always knew looking at that photograph there was something, something terrible in that kid's eyes. In a way it was like the world ended, it was horrible, truly horrible. Leave it now, sorry. Um, it's still painful. I just, I just cuddled him. That was really all we could do. The current chief executive of the SFA, Stuart Reagan, said his organisation was taking responsibility for child protection failings of the past. I'm sickened um, as a father, um, as a director of the Scottish FA. Clearly at this stage we need to understand the information and we're grateful to the, the BBC and indeed grateful to Peter Haynes for, for having the, the guts and the bravery to come forward. We need to apologise deeply to Peter Haynes for the fact that this matter wasn't taken seriously. The Scottish FA at the time didn't, didn't appear to listen and nothing came of it. Um, you know, that's uh, unacceptable. Hugh Stevenson died in 2004 and will never answer these allegations. Pete now hopes to put this behind him and achieve closure, but first, he has a message for others who suffered like he says he did. I would encourage them to come forward and give information, whether they do that anonymously or like myself, come forward and you know speak out about it. Anything like that would would help us stop because at the end of the day we're all older now. We have children. They, they need to be protected as well. Mark Daly, reporting Scotland. Pete Haynes there speaking to Mark, who's with me. Mark, we've we've watched this scandal unfold south of the border. Is this the first time that someone has spoken publicly about what happened in Scotland? Yes, yes it is, and I think we can gauge the significance of it by the reaction of the SFA. There was no officialdom from Stuart Reagan today, uh, no beating about the bush, and within the last hour the SFA have released a further statement where Mr Reagan apologises unreservedly to Peter Haynes for what appears to have been a wholly unsatisfactory outcome to his original sharing of information. We will work with existing and former staff to obtain as much information as possible and have also offered to meet Mr Haynes at a time appropriate to him. We will also liaise with Police Scotland to establish a full picture relating to this historic case. Um, now, more than 350 ex-footballers have now come forward across England and Wales and I see no reason to believe that Scotland will be exempt from that in the coming days and months and weeks. And there's been a development within the last few minutes. Well, there has. Uh, just in the past few minutes, we received word about the Scottish Youth Football Association, which is uh, an affiliate of the SFA, and that they have suspended one of its members. Now, this statement just in from the Scottish Youth FA says, after we were informed of allegations relating to a period prior to the SYFA, the Scottish Youth FA's formation in 1999, we have placed a member of our admin staff on precautionary suspension while further investigations are carried out. It goes on to say, we deal with all matters involving child safety with the utmost seriousness and we'll be undertaking our investigations promptly and rigorously. And as I say, I think there is going to be much more of this in the coming days and weeks. Thank you very much, Mark.